What's up guys, this is Chad with Living the Van Life. Right now I'm down here in sunny Southern California, USA. I've been living in a van since 2011. Hey, what's up? It's Thursday, November 10th, 2011. Um, yeah, I just thought I'd throw up a video here on, uh, on YouTube and uh, share with you guys uh, what living in a van's all about. Uh, a lot of people are doing it nowadays. I'm here to talk to you guys about that and uh, show you uh, what I've done to make my life more easy uh, living in a van. For the first 10 years of my van life, I lived in a 1991 Volkswagen Westfalia, which many of you here on the channel have grown to love over the years, and this whole channel was basically built on that old van again. I still have the old van, but in the last couple years, I've upgraded to my full-time rig, my 2020 Mercedes 4x4 Sprinter van. And in today's video, I'm gonna give you guys a full tour of this van and how I've adapted it to fit my van life of coming out here, getting way off road, back into the back country, living van life and sharing it all with you guys right here on this channel. I know over the years, you guys have had lots of questions of how I set this up. So hopefully I answer those questions in today's video. Let's jump to it and get this video started. This is a 2020 Mercedes 4x4 Sprinter van. Now I bought this brand new from Mercedes back in November of 2020. Matter of fact, I drove it off the lot with only seven miles on it. Now it came to me from Mercedes as a completely blank cargo van. Now this is a 2500, basically meaning it is a three quarter ton capacity. It does have the four wheel drive system included in it stock from factory, although it has been highly upgraded and modified since then. And we'll talk about those details later. But when I bought this, I had the goal of setting out to build the most off-road capable, full-time livable machine. Now, are there other vehicles out there that are more off-road capable? Absolutely. Are there other vehicles out there that are more full-time livable? Yes, correct. There definitely is when you get into full-size class A motorhomes, etc. But for me, it was all about finding the balance between the two, having something that is capable of getting me way out into the backcountry, but also having everything that I need to live full-time comfortably in a van. After all, I've been doing it going on 13 plus years now. So it's important to have some comforts when this is your full-time life. Now, as we work our way through today's van tour video, I'm gonna talk about some of the concepts and some of the beliefs I had in building out this machine. We'll start from the details on the outside and some of the upgrades that I've made. I'll work my way through the upgrades on the drivetrain system to make this thing more capable off-road. And then eventually we'll get to the inside and talk about some of my approaches and how I wanted to make my van life more comfortable and sustainable. Now, starting right here at the very front of the van is perhaps one of the most important tools, especially when it comes to getting into the backcountry on solo trips, like I find myself probably 99% of the time. I don't have another van, another vehicle, or anybody else to help me get out of a situation that I might be stuck in. And that's where this 12,000 pound winch comes into play. Now this worn winch is held in by a CA tuned off-road bumper that is designed for mounting winches on sprinter vans. Now this is the Xeon 12S Platinum by Warren. It's a 12,000 pound capacity. It is a Bluetooth controlled unit, which is pretty nice for being able to control the winch wirelessly from a safe spot around the vehicle or the obstacle that I'm dealing with. However, I will be honest with you in saying that I wish it did have an actual hard cable controller that would plug into the winch just in case something ever went wrong with the Bluetooth wireless controller, I could plug in that cable and operate it like a standard winch. Nonetheless, it hasn't ever given me a problem. Now at a 12,000 pound capacity on the winch and this van weighing 10,000 pounds, it's starting to get outside the ideal weight limit range for a winch of this capacity. So I do have stuff like a snatch block in my recovery kit that will help increase the pulling capacity 
of this winch if it came down to it. But overall, this winch ends up being such a great tool, not only for getting yourself unstuck, but also for getting obstacles out of your way on a trail that might be preventing you from getting back to safety, whether it's a rock, a boulder, uh, maybe trees, etc. I've actually been able to use this winch for multiple uses, and it really overall just gives me the confidence of going out into the backcountry by myself to do what I love to do with my van. Now another prominent accessory here on the front of the van is this whole entire off-road lighting kit by Baja Designs. Now Baja Designs doesn't sponsor me officially. They didn't pay me to talk about this. Matter of fact, I bought these lights with my very own hard-earned money. They're a brand that have been trusted in Baja Racing for many, many years. And I really like the look of the round lights. Kind of reminds me of the old school Baja Racing versus some of the more modern looking flat light bars that a lot of people use these days. Now, a lot of people like to say, well, geez, Chad, I think you need some more lights. I don't think you have enough. And while they're poking fun at me and saying I have too many lights, I will go on to say that when you're out on a trail way into the backcountry and it is dark and you're trying to get your way back to safety, there is no such thing as having too much light when it comes to traveling off-road at night. More than once, these lights have gotten me through some sticky situations at night and they have proven to be worth their weight in gold. Now this whole kit starts down here in the factory fog light position where I've replaced them with some Baja design lights. And then here on the bull bar of the CA tuned off-road bumper, I've got the Baja design LP9s in the amber. Then up here on the windshield lights, otherwise known as ditch lights, these are the Baja design XL Pros. And then up across the top, we've got five more Baja design LP9s. I've got two amber lights on the outside, followed by three clear lights on the inside. Now the cool thing is, using my Switch Pro from my driver's seat, I can actually control each one of these banks completely separately. So if I'm dealing with some heavy fog, dust, snow, rain, whatever it may be, these amber lights down low in line with the factory headlights really prove to shoot a lot of light down on the road surface so you can see through that. Now a lot of people ask about the amber lights. Scientifically, the amber light produces light at a different frequency that helps reduce the reflection off of the snow, the dust, the fog, and minimizes the amount of reflection back into the driver's eyes. So I can run these in those types of situations. Here, these ditch lights really help light up the roadway on the side, the trail, whatever I may be doing. And then up top, I can control the amber separately from the clears. And there again, just more amber light, or I can turn everything on all at once and really light up my trail so I can get to camp safely. Now, moving on with the subject of lighting, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the scene lights that I have installed here on the side of my van. We can see here above the passenger door, I've got this scene light mounted here. There's also a second one mounted down at that corner. You can see that little black dot. So I have one set here on the passenger side. I have a complete other set over on the driver's side. And these are known as scene lights. Now these lights really turn out to be quite useful if it's here setting up camp and I can turn lights on this side of the van and I can see what I'm doing to set up camp, use it as a porch light. If there's an obstacle that I'm navigating on the trail, I can light this side of the van up and see what I'm doing. And the same applies for the lights on the driver's side. There again, using my Switch Pro control panel from the driver's seat. I can control each one individually. However, I will say while these lights are useful, this is probably one of the things I regret about my build. These lights were literally the first accessory that I installed on the van. Before I did anything on the interior, I bolted these lights through the body, I sealed them off, I wired them up, and then I proceeded to build the inside of the van around these lights. After I completed my build, I realized that if anything ever went wrong with these lights, if a bulb burned out, if they started to leak, if I wanted to remove them, if the wiring went bad, etc., I literally would have to completely dismantle the inside of my van just to get to the inside where those lights are installed. What I wish I would have done is actually mounted these style of lights up on the roof rack that way I wasn't so committed to having them in this spot. So that's one of the regrets. Do not install lights through the body of your van. You're just too committed to them in that point. But I will go on to say that they really are handy 
for having light on all sides of your van. As we continue on here at the front of the van, we're going to start talking about the wheels, the tires, the suspension, and the drivetrain. Right here off the bat, we start out with a set of BF Goodrich HD terrain tires. Now I've been running BF Goodrich tires on my vans for a number of years, going all the way back to the Volkswagen where I really enjoyed running the KO2 all-terrain tires. Right now on the Sprinter van, I'm running the HD terrains, which is a newer tire from BF Goodrich, and it features a good heavy duty tire. It's got a good off-road aggressive lug, which makes it great for out here in the American Southwest and getting through the rough and rugged trails that I like to go out and do here. Uh, those are mounted on a set of agile off-road Overlander HD wheels. These wheels not only look cool on the van, but they also offer the feature of two valve stems one valve stem has a dump lever on it where I can dump a high volume of air very quickly when I approach an off-road scenario and I want to improve my ride and my traction off-road. These wheels also feature a second valve stem that is a higher volume valve stem. I can plug a bigger hose in and get a higher volume of air into the tire quicker when it comes to airing back up. Moving on into the inside, I'm currently running a Agile Rip Kit, otherwise known as the Ride Improvement Package, featuring Fox Shock suspension and some of the upgrades in that kit offered by Agile. Now, when I originally built this van, I had the Van Compass two inch lift kit installed on the van, which was great for getting the van to a good solid and stout ride height, allowing me to put bigger tires on it. Now there was nothing wrong with that suspension. It was a good suspension, but when it came time to doing some prototyping and testing on the Atlas transfer case with Agile Off-Road, we had to make some adjustment to the height of the suspension in order to get the driveline angles lined up to run that transfer case, which I'll discuss in more detail later. So that's why I took the Van Compass suspension lift off and now running the Agile Rip Kit. Right now, I'm running a set of prototype Fox shocks. These are an external reservoir. It's fully adjustable bypass shocks, so it's fully adjustable rebound and dampening. So we can really dial these suspensions in for the type of use that we want to do. Also in the back is a set of piggyback reservoir shocks that are fully adjustable, both rebound and dampening, which is very important for dialing this stuff in. So suspension, wheels, tires, Loving this setup on the van right now. Now in setting out to build a very capable off-road machine while being full-time livable, developing a relationship with the folks over at Agile Off-Road has proved to be very beneficial. Agile Off-Road is a company that puts a lot of research and development into new parts that really help expand the capabilities of these vans when it comes to getting off-road. And one of those being the selectable locking differential that they developed with ARB. It turns the less than desirable factory open differential into a selectable locking differential that truly maximizes the amount of traction to the drive tires in the rear. Now, prior to getting this installed on my van, I didn't have any previous experience with a locking differential and I had no clue just how much improvement there is by adding a locking differential. And it truly transforms the off-road capabilities of these vans. So far to date, it is perhaps one of my most favorite upgrades to the van that allows me to get further into the backcountry. Now, when Mercedes designed the four-wheel drive system in these vans, these vans were designed to basically just deliver packages safely in winter conditions, or perhaps get the family up to the ski area safely for a day of skiing in the wintertime. They certainly weren't designed to come out here and do the crazy off-roading like we've been doing the last couple of years here on the channel with this van. Now the four-wheel drive system coming straight from the factory has a push button on the dash that enables you to select between four-wheel drive and two-wheel drive. It also has a low range button once you are 
in four wheel drive. And that gives you about a 1.3 to one crawl ratio, which is really less than desirable for coming out here and tackling any sort of heavy obstacles. The transfer case that comes in these vans really operates more like an all wheel drive system rather than an actual four wheel drive system. And that is because there are planetary gears inside the transfer case that act like more of an open differential and it differentiates power from the front to the rear depending on which tires have traction and which tires don't have traction. And that's just less than desirable for coming out here and tackling off-road terrain. And that's where the folks at Agile Off-Road, again, have come into play with developing some parts to really change that game. They have been working on adapting an Atlas transfer case into the drive system of these four-wheel drive sprinter vans. Now, Atlas transfer cases are hugely desirable in the four-wheel drive community. They really give you a lot more control over the four wheel drive system. They give you a three to one crawl ratio versus the 1.3 to one crawl ratio that comes in the stock transfer case. And that is a huge improvement for crawling over rough terrain and tackling obstacles. Another huge improvement to the drivetrain system that an Atlas makes is the fact that now it acts more like a locking center differential, meaning that it provides 50% power to the rear wheels and 50% power to the front wheels while you're locked in four wheel drive. And when paired together with the locking differential and an Atlas transfer case, this thing becomes almost unstoppable. One of my favorite parts about the Atlas transfer case is the fact that it gives me separate control from my front drive system to my rear drive system. So I can actually lock it into two wheel drive, low range, and together with the locking differential in the rear, I can get myself into some pretty incredible places without even having to go into four wheel drive. Now the Atlas transfer case from Agile Off-Road is currently in the prototyping stage. Matter of fact, my van is one of the first ones out on the road doing testing both on-road and off-road, providing feedback and doing some research and development. And soon this will be available on the market to the public. Another integral part of the Sprinter van build has been including an onboard air compressor. Here in the engine bay underneath the hood, I've got a ARB twin air compressor. It provides plenty of pressure and volume for being able to air up all four of my tires after completing an off-road trail and it gets me back up to highway pressures. Also the rear locking differential is powered by air and this compressor provides the air necessary to operate that locker. And of course there's a multitude of other uses that it can be used for like cleaning the dust out of air filters and other items around the van. Hey, I'm gonna just pause this van tour video for a quick moment and talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Squarespace. Perhaps you have a lawn mowing business. Maybe you've got a tire changing service. Perhaps you're just a handyman that wants to help fix things up around the neighborhood. Whatever it may be, chances are you need a website. I'd like to tell you about Squarespace. Now Squarespace is a leading online web design platform with hundreds of professional looking templates for you to choose from in starting your very own website. Matter of fact, the cool thing is that you don't have to have any previous web design experience or education. If you know how to use a computer, you can create your own professional looking custom website at squarespace.com. If you guys are interested in checking out Squarespace and making all of your website dreams come true, check out squarespace.com forward slash living the van life matter of fact they've even given me the opportunity to save you guys 10 percent off your first purchase at squarespace by entering the coupon code living the van life thank you to squarespace for sponsoring today's van tour video with that being said let's jump back into the tour as we get to the back of the van i'd like to point out some of the items that i have installed here on the back and the main one being the full-size spare tire that you see here mounted to the back. And this is a full-size direct replacement of the tires that I run. Once you start getting yourself off-road, you start raising the risk of getting a puncture. And you don't want to rely on the stock factory spare tire for getting yourself out of a rugged trail. And so having a full-size spare tire is hugely important. And hanging off the spare tire is a trash roux. Basically that comes down to pack it in, pack it out. Of course, while we're out on the trail generating trash, you need a spot to dispose of it. And this allows you to dispose of your trash properly 
outside of your living space until you can get it back to the proper trash disposal mechanism, like a dumpster or a trash can. It also helps keep the trails clean by having a good way to dispose of the trash while we're out in the backcountry. Now, by now, you're probably wondering what happened to my back window. As you can see, it's all taped up here. Uh, just a couple weeks ago, I got rear-ended by another driver. They hit the box. It smashed the door in here, and it broke my window. So I'm in the process of getting that fixed. That'll get fixed next week. So that's why you see it all taped up here. Also, a lot of people ask about this box that is here on the back of my van. A lot of people think it's a generator or some sort of uh, power device. And actually, it's just a storage box. And I like to refer to this as the shed out back. So up here on the top shelf, it's got various different fluids that I might need. Parts cleaner, lubricant, spare oil, brake fluid, window cleaner, armor all. Then down here, this is my recovery kit. Inside this bag, I've got winch extensions. I've got tree savers. I've got a snatch block. I've got all the D-rings. I've got extra toe straps. Basically everything that I need for a self-recovery using my winch, whether I'm attaching to a tree, a rock, another vehicle, myself, etc. Also in here is my little electric chainsaw from DeWalt. That's all stored in here, so I can deploy that if I need to cut down a tree that's across the road or the trail or cut some firewood, etc. That is all stored here in this box, conveniently here on the back of the van. Also, this is another important tool that has come in quite handy if you guys watch the channel on a regular basis. You see me had to deploy the shovel a couple times, but I keep a full-size shovel on board here on the van strapped to the rack here. I like to have a full-size shovel rather than one of the small collapsible shovels because, let's face it, when it comes to having to dig, it's nice just to have a full-size shovel. And also, this pickaxe here. Some of you may have seen me use that. It's also handy when you're out in the desert and dealing with some of this hard pan. If you do have to do some digging, it's nice to have a pickaxe. And all of that is attached here to the rack. So us van lifers refer to the space inside these back doors underneath the bed as the garage space. And there's a lot of items that are stored in there that I need access to on a daily basis. We can see here, everything swings open with the doors and we've got quick, easy access to the garage. And then on this door here, I have my axes conveniently mounted. Uh, having them mounted here on the door provides easy access. It keeps the axes organized and keeps them safe from bouncing around in the back of the van. These are held on by these little products that are called quick fists and they are quite handy. They're really made for any sort of tool that you might want to hang like this. Could be a shovel, axe, pickaxe. Over here is my folding saw that I use quite a bit. So that's all convenient right here on the back door and this also acts as a good handle for opening and closing the door. Now if there is anything that living in a van for 13 plus years has taught me it's that staying clean and organized in a small space is absolutely key in your happiness out on the road living in a van. And that was my goal with this space is to try and maximize my storage, but then also accessibility. And that starts right here with these slide out trays by Shucks and Vans, which is a company based out of the Pacific Northwest. Actually a good friend of mine, Chris, shout out to Chris at Shucks and Vans for creating these cool slide outs. They're attached by these heavy duty slide out rails that actually have a 600 pound capacity. So you can really put a decent amount of weight up here and trust that it's going to hold it. I've got various different items that are all held in here. Whereas if I didn't have this slide out tray, getting access to that stuff in the back would be a bit more of a challenge. There's actually two of these trays side by side so that I can stand next to them and have access side to side. Uh, up here you can see items like the Instant Pot, shoes, water. I've got these Sidio crates and these things are actually really handy that I found for van life. They fit perfectly across this size of tray on the slide outs and it really just allows me some stackable storage options that keep everything organized right here inside these trays. So like for instance here inside this tray I've got some DeWalt power tools, cordless, Got a little vacuum cleaner, I've got a drill, I've got an impact gun, spare batteries, and other bits and accessories that go along with these tools. They sit nicely right up here on top, they stay organized out of the way, and it's stackable. And for instance, under here, I've got all my tripods stored in here, extra camera equipment, 
coveralls, boots, extra stuff in here, extra camera lenses and tools and stuff that I need in here. And so these Cityo crates provide some great stockable options. And it's stored conveniently back in the back with these slide out trays. And sticking with the theme of being organized and convenient, I'm gonna talk about the outdoor kitchen that I have installed here underneath these slide out drawers. Now this ends up pulling out underneath in a couple of stages. And as you guys know, here on the channel, outdoor campfire cooking has been a big part of what I do here in van life. And I really enjoy that aspect of it. However, in van life, not all cooking can be done over a campfire. At some point, you need some sort of a kitchen, and that's what I've designed here to be stored conveniently underneath the bed. And of course, in any sort of kitchen scenario, you always wanna maximize the amount of usable countertop. And that's what we have here. And the secondary pullout is more counter space. Up here, this is counter space, but underneath is actually pantry space as well. Now I found a cool design for a hinge so that rather than using flip up lids where I lose that counter space, I have this actually flips up and gives me access to the pantry items underneath all while maintaining a usable counter space here up on top. And that happens with both of these. And then down in here I have items like cutting boards, I've got spices, I've got all my cooking utensils skillets, pots, pans, everything you need in a kitchen is all right here. This ends up being one of my favorite parts of the whole van build and the fact that I can pull up to an amazing landscape at sunset. I can pull out my outdoor kitchen and cook a meal all while enjoying the outdoors and the view. This is what van life is all about. And the fact that it's all convenient, breaks down easily, stores away conveniently, out of sight, out of mind. That's what it's all about. So with having only an outdoor kitchen, a lot of people ask, well, don't you want to have a kitchen inside? And to be honest with you, my ultimate goal was to avoid any sort of cooking inside my van. Anytime you cook meat or anything with oil, that smell really just permeates the interior of a small space, especially in a van like this. And so I avoid that at all costs. Now, the amount of times that I've had to give up cooking outside because it's raining outside has been next to none. Uh, if it's raining outside, it's time just to warm up a can of soup inside with the jet boil or just simply go out to eat. And quite honestly, the outdoor kitchen has worked out really, really well for my scenario. Now, worst case scenario, I have been looking for an awning that would quickly deploy from the top and perhaps give me a little bit of shelter if I were to be cooking outdoors and needed some shelter from the rain. Other than that, over the last several years, it's worked out quite well. Over here on this side, I've got a whole nother pullout drawer. Here in this space that I've designed to store my campfire cast iron, my Dutch oven, skillet, etc. I do store them in paper bags that helps keep them from clanking around against each other, making extra noise, and really kind of helps with the moisture and rust control, I find, by having them in the plastic bags. Other than that, I've got various compartments that store the rest of my campfire cooking utensils that I need when I'm out here cooking in the backcountry. Here in this space, when I've got the outdoor kitchen pulled out and deployed, I can pull this out partially and use this as extra counter space. But actually under here is actually my tool storage compartment here. I've got all of the mechanical tools that I need to work on my van, do any sort of maintenance or repairs that I might need while out on the trail. All the tools stored right here, conveniently accessible from the back of the van when I need them. There again, providing even more storage right here. Also along the driver's side of the garage space is my 600 amp hours of Battleborn lithium iron phosphate batteries. Now this is six individual 100 amp hour batteries that are all tied together in parallel to give me one big 600 amp hour 12 volt system. The whole entire battery management system is all located down here. I've got all my main fuses, switches, fuse panels, charge controllers, etc., are all mounted down underneath the rack that houses the batteries. Also, this big guy here on the end is my Victron Multi Plus 3000 volt amp inverter. Now, this does take care of any charging for the battery system that comes in off of shore power. 
if I plug in at an RV park or somebody's house, etc. But the main thing is this is my inverter. So it takes 12 volt power and it converts it over to 120. So if I want to use any household appliances like my instant pot or charging my camera batteries, etc., that's all taken care of through this inverter right here by Victron Energy. Now, another surprise that catch a lot of people off guard when we're discussing my battery system and how I have it set up is the fact that I don't run any sort of solar panel up on top of my van. Now I will say that I did future proof myself and I do have a solar charge controller installed down below my batteries where I have the rest of my battery management system set up. And I have wires installed all the way to the roof rack so when I am ready for solar I am prepared to just install the panel and plug it in. But in the three years since I've built the van, I actually haven't found a need for any sort of solar panel installation up top. Now the way that I charge my system is I've installed a second alternator on the engine that is a high capacity alternator and it charges upwards of 280 amps directly to the battery system. Now that power coming from the alternator is managed by a wake speed WS500 and essentially what that is, is that's the brain that communicates from the battery to the alternator and tells the alternator how much power to give the batteries depending on their need and what state of charge they're in. So that alone has been hugely efficient in keeping my 600 amp hours of batteries completely charged up. Now this battery system is really the main base of my operations off grid. It allows me to basically it be a little mini film studio on wheels. It charges all of my camera gear. It keeps all of my lights running. It runs my instant pot when I'm cooking with that. And so having this battery system on board has been hugely beneficial in allowing me to get out and do what I do here on living the van life. Now, when I've done a van tour about this particular van build, I've got quite a few concerned comments and questions wondering why I didn't show the shower or my bathroom inside the van. Well, the truth of the matter is there actually is no shower installed in the van and there's no permanent bathroom or toilet installed in the van either. So that's what we're gonna talk about today and how I shower and how I go to the bathroom in my van life. Now, when I started living in my Volkswagen some 13 years ago, that van is such a compact, tiny living space that I physically had no way of having a shower inside that van. It just physically wasn't possible. And even when it came down to having some sort of toilet in the van, it just did not make any sort of sense for me to have a toilet inside basically my living room while I attempted to live in this very small van. And so through that process, I really learned how to do those kinds of things outside my van. So when it came down to needing a shower, I learned that while I'm out on the road, I can take advantage of the truck stops. They have wonderful shower spaces that are cleaned on a regular basis after every single use. And so those proved to be quite useful in van life. Nowadays, I have an Anytime Fitness membership, which is a 24 hour access gym that has private clean showers that allow me to use a shower anytime I want and they're spread across the country and most of the time I can find one in whatever town that I'm in. So over the years, I was able to feel quite comfortable in doing my showering outside the van and it really allows me to simplify my van build and maximize the living space that I already have built in such a tiny footprint. If I were to install a shower system into my van, it involves way more plumbing it involves a much bigger water system. It involves some sort of water heater that involves more electrical and involves more plumbing even yet. So it just really makes a van build that much more complicated, especially when I was already comfortable doing that kind of stuff in other facilities that didn't involve the van. In the process of learning to live in the Volkswagen, and when it came down to using the toilet, I learned to do that kind of thing in cafes, in coffee shops, in restaurants, in grocery stores, in truck stops, and just being able to find and adapt any sort of public restroom into my lifestyle of living in a van. Now, living in the Sprinter van, stowed away conveniently in the garage space is this guy right here. And this is what is known as the luggable loo. And everybody thinks like, wow, that's weird. You like do your business in a bucket. And really 
that's what it is. And if we look, it is just your standard regular bucket. And if we look inside, it's perfectly brand new. And I've been using this bucket for about three years now. The only thing I keep inside it is some trash bags sit down here in the bottom. And I use these trash bags as a liner. So any business that I use this luggable loo for never actually touches the bucket, which keeps it nice and sanitary. I use the trash bag as a liner. I put it in just like so. And then the lid of the bucket actually flips up and is a toilet seat. That snaps right over there. Flip up your lid and voila, you've got yourself a luggable loo that stores conveniently. Then when you're done with whatever you're doing in there, you can wrap this up, dispose of it properly, then you still maintain a clean sanitary spot and it just stows conveniently. So when I don't have a public restroom around or a cafe or a restaurant and I've got an emergency, I'm able to deploy this in the Sprinter van and do what I need and dispose of it. So that is how I do shower and my bathroom business while living in a van. So here we are high atop the van. I'm sitting on top of my rugged design concept roof rack and mounted to that is my Starlink. And my Starlink is high speed internet via satellite no matter where I'm at. And when I say high speed, we're talking about download speeds anywhere from 100 to 200 megabits per second. And I've seen uploads anywhere from 20 to 30 megabits per second. So it is true high speed internet. And because it's satellite, it works just about anywhere. I've been hundreds of miles away from any sort of cell phone service, but yet able to stay connected to the YouTube channel and upload videos all via the Starlink. And that is actually made possible by Star Mount. Now, most of us are used to seeing the Starlink dishes set up on the quad pod and on a pole, and they're up in the air and they're tilted towards the north and they're spinning around and all that stuff. My buddy Brandon over at Star Mount has developed a way to be able to flat mount these. It's weatherproof inside a case that is designed by Star Mount. And that means there's no getting to camp and having to set up your Starlink. You don't have to string cords out. You don't have to set anything up. It's always set up and ready to go right here, hard mounted. And the cool thing about having it here is that it actually works in motion as well. So not only while I'm parked in one spot camping, but also driving down the road in the backcountry, I'm able to get up to date navigation. I can stay connected with friends and family and loved ones and let them know where I'm at. And I always know where I'm at because I'm connected to the internet for my navigation. I can get up-to-date weather, etc. This thing right here has completely changed the game when it comes to van life and being able to work remotely. Starlink made possible by Starmount. If you guys are interested in staying connected out in the backcountry, check out Brandon and Starmount. Brandon is the guy who I go racing with down in Baja and we've become really good friends and he's started himself quite the business and really changing the lives of a lot of people out here doing what we're doing all because of Starmount. As we move to the inside of the van, this is one of the important parts of van life right here, which is a 12 volt powered fridge freezer combo. This one's made by Engel. It's a chest style fridge, so it flips up here. The thing that I like about it is it's accessible from the outside as well as the inside. It's got plenty of room for goods that need to be refrigerated. I also have the option of running half of it as a freezer if I so need so. It latches down, it slides back into place here. It's got latches here that lock it into place and keep it from flying out under heavy braking or off-roading. Here in the forward part of my cabinet system here, underneath the sink, I've got a five gallon jerry can. This is what makes up my fresh water system. This is just a simple, basic five gallon jerry can. I tapped into the top of it here where I have a quick connect fitting so I can pop off the intake line. I can pull that jerry can out to go fill it simply. There's an intake line that runs down inside there as a pickup. That runs up to a 12 volt pump. So when I turn on my sink, 
I have fresh water at a sink up here above on top of the countertop. A lot of people might think this is a little too minimalistic, but I find that I can actually make five gallons last me about a week and a half to two weeks. And I use it to brush my teeth and rinse the occasional dish and whatever else I need here inside the household of the van. The whole idea here was to keep the water system as simple as possible. My plumbing is simple, it's direct. The electrical is very simple. I don't have any water lines running outside the van. I don't have any freshwater holding tanks that I need to worry about freezing up in cold winter camping. So it's really designed to be simple and work well through cold weather camping. Also here on the door of the cabinet, I've got a roll of paper towels. This is just a quick, simple little trash can before I move the trash out into the trash -aroo. And then I've got a little whisk broom to help maintain the cleanliness here inside the van. It's all stored nice and out of sight, out of mind down here in the cabinet. And up here for my sink, I have this insert built in here so I can still use the countertop when I'm not using the sink. And then here, boom, fresh water running down into the sink. Now underneath the van, I do have a 15 gallon gray water tank that is a holding tank that holds all of this water as it drains out. I'm not worried about that freezing up because I very rarely fill that up and it's easy to drain. Every living space needs a comfortable spot to just chill and relax. And that's exactly what I built this bench seat right here for. Now, this is all kind of more or less laid out like the old Volkswagen, the Westfalia. The Westfalias have a countertop area that's here, and then there's a bench seat that goes all the way here to the slider door. Uh, here in my build, I did incorporate the 12 volt cooler and fridge uh, so that I can access it outside. So that is here, but it also provides a very nice counter space. So when I swing my table over here, where I may be enjoying a meal, perhaps I've got my laptop set up here and I'm editing, I've got all this space to spread out onto, workspace here and more counter space. So it really becomes a conducive work environment here. And especially when I can pull up to a wonderful view, open my slider door, enjoy the fresh air while I'm working away. This is van life guys. This is my workspace slash living space slash production space. It all goes down right here. And then of course behind me here, is the bed and I actually sleep sideways thanks to these bump outs that you see lit up here with my RGB LED strip lights and we can see that on both sides. Now that is thanks to the flare space system which gains an extra 10 inches side to side by adding the fiberglass bump outs. That gains an extra 20 inches of living space this way and I sleep across here. And this is it. This is where all the magic happens here inside the van. Now, this space right here ends up being a very important space inside the van. Now, it's a little bit of a secret until now, so make sure and don't tell anybody that this is here. Underneath this space, we flip this up, and this is all of my camera storage. This is a very important part of the whole process of what I do here for the YouTube channel and being able to stay organized, but yet still productive in shooting my content. So I've got all of my camera gear laid out here. And the whole goal with this is along the back of this case here, I've got USB outlets, wall outlets. So anything that requires 120 volt wall plugs in order to charge, I have that all laid out here. And this runs off of the inverter that's powered by the Battleborn batteries. And so everything stays in here tidy, tucked away, clean, but charged and ready to go so that I can just pop a piece of gear out of here and put it into use and shoot the content that you guys enjoy. And then at the end of the day, everything goes away. It's out of sight, out of mind, and I still have all the space to use. So very important piece here. Now up here running the length of my living space, we see these overhead cabinets. These cabinets end up being very convenient and important to store extra food, goods, all goes up here. Over here, we've got more food and some clothes, extra shirts stowed away in here. Moving on back, then we start dealing with more jackets, sweatshirts, and in the very back, heavy winter coats that I use, etc. All of my battery monitoring 
screens are up here in this area. And so the overhead cabinets end up being very useful here for extra storage. And of course, underneath, then I've got under cabinet lighting. That's my main source of lighting here inside the van. And it just really provides a nice light here inside the van. Down over here next to the bench seat, this ends up being kind of a dead cabinet space. So we turn this into dirty laundry. So it's kind of like a laundry chute. All my dirty laundry gets stored down inside there. We've got adjustable shelving in here. Lots of stuff stored up in there. Over here, got some pull-out drawers that hold various items. This is kind of the bathroom cabinet, toothbrush, toothpaste, lotion, stuff like that gets stored there. And down here is just kind of the junk drawer that catches everything else. And then in this space, underneath the bench seat, turn this into a drawer that pulls out. And this is all my clean laundry here. So socks, underwear, t-shirt, pants, shorts, etc. All stored here. And again, secured with latches so that we don't end up with that flying out under heavy braking. This right here is an insulated partition that pulls across from the driver's seat and it separates off the driving area from the rear living space. This just accordions shut. And so when I'm back here living some van life, this becomes very good, useful for privacy. It's also insulated, so it helps keep the heat in here and keep the cold up there or vice versa, depending on the season. But it's kind of nice. Everything stores away back here in the back. This ties off here so it's secure and it's good privacy. This partition is made by a company called Tourig, T-O-U-R-I-G. It's a bit expensive, but I tell you what, it's all made to fit perfectly here inside the Sprinter van. It magnets off here in these positions, and I use this thing every single day. Up top here is a overhead cab shelf. This again is a product that has been made by Shucks and Vans up in the Pacific Northwest. And this installs, it's aftermarket, but it makes use of this high headspace over the driving area. And there's all sorts of storage and being able to put stuff up here. I have an extra down blanket here, extra hats, and then all my window coverings also get stored up there. Good and convenient, stored up above the driving area. Now over the last several years, Mercedes has put a lot of work into refining the dashes here in the Sprinter vans. The older ones were left a little bit like perhaps a work truck or a work van. So now we get the modern dashes, which is really nice. Uh, however, there's not a lot of options for being able to mount your phone hands-free or perhaps other accessories if you like. And that's where this right here comes into play. This is the Navidoc Overlander, and it's made specifically to fit this model of Sprinter vans. It actually mounts up to the dash here without actually having to drill any holes into the dash, which is really, really nice. And it's very, very secure here. And so if we want to mount the phone here, I've got RAM mounts that are mounted here and they're fully adjustable here and I can lock those into place. There's the rails on the Navidoc here that allow me to adjust the position of that along this rail. Over here, I have my iPad mounted up to where we can access Gaia Maps for any of our navigation. I like to have my maps up here so I know where we're going. So this here presents a nice cockpit that is well prepared with all the information that we need and moving forward on a trail or a trip wherever we're going. And we still have access to all the Mercedes controls, stereo, etc. So the Navidoc ends up working really, really well. And I use the heck out of this on my trips throughout the backcountry and road trips. Well guys, thank you for sticking with me through this lengthy van tour. I hope that it answers a lot of the questions that you guys have had for me over the years on how I've laid things out here in the van and some of my reasoning behind building the van the way that I did. If I didn't cover something that you were curious in, please leave your question in the comment section down below the video and I'll do my best to get back to you and answer that question. Other than that, guys, thanks for being part of the channel. I really appreciate all of you guys. With that being said, I'm going to hit the road in search of the next Living the Van Life adventure. Peace out. Keep on trucking.